providing resources and comfort to caregivers. This is Caregiver Crossing. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome to Caregiver Crossing. We're glad you're here. Uh, If this is your first time joining us here on Caregiver Crossing, this is a show that's brought to you by Joy's House, presented in partnership with Cardon and Associates, and we're here with you every week talking about all things caregiving. My name is Terry Stacey. Next to me is my friend, Tina McIntosh. Hi. Bonjour. Oh, bonjour. Je m'appelle Tina. Je m'appelle Tina. That's all I can say. Oh, it's good, though. Oh, oui, oui. Oh, oui, oui. Uh, Producer is here, too. What's your name again? It's Uh, Noah. Noah Taylor. Salut. Noah Taylor. I see what you did there. I got a little bit of French. That's really good. I'm getting ready for the Olympics. Are you going to apologize for it? Uh... No, but I should, shouldn't I? I'm giving Terry a hard time (laughs) because she walked into studio this morning and said, I'm sorry, how many times? I don't count them. 47. 47 (laughs) times. I had a lot to apologize for. (laughs) She did not. But why do we do that? I don't know, but I am that person. I'm that person that even if you're wrong... I say, oh, I'm sorry, but... You know, yes, you do. I do. Do you say, I'm sorry, when you, like, I don't know, walk through a doorway at the same time as someone else and it's wide enough I, for two I, people? I, I will say, excuse me. Okay. I will say, excuse me. Oh, Would you, you say, say, like, very egocentrically, so though, excuse, excuse me, me, where I would just be like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, I'm that person. You all have a friend like that. I know. I know you do. But here's the thing. I'm that person. You're so kind. And I think part of that comes with kindness. Girl Scouts. Well, no, oh boy. We're going to get some emails about that. Um, (laughs) Girl Scouts taught me to be kind. No, kindness. 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 Okay, yes. What were you thinking? Well, I thought you were going to say like Girl Scouts taught me how to be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You know what? Just kindness. And I think that's where it comes from. It's not just Girl Scouts. It's how I was raised. You are very kind. I just don't want you you to be sorry for everything. I'm so sorry. Because I don't think, I don't think, yeah, actually, I think you probably really are. Anyway. Hi. um, I just got back from Tampa, Florida. Oh, oh, did you? Mm -hmm. For? A U.S. aging conference. Oh, man. I know. It doesn't sound riveting to everyone. Was the food good? (laughs) The food was fantastic. Good. Um, I got, uh, Karina and I went together, my sister and coworker, and we got to have dinner with Candace. (gasps) Oh, that's super duper fun. She's great. She's really good. Yeah, she really is. And, you know, you pick up and move to a different city. It's a big deal. And she really, yeah, she's loving exploring state. and yeah, it was great. But the conference, so yes, Candace is wonderful. It was We're so great to, to be that. with her. She's the kind of friend where you might not talk for months, then you see each other yep. and you just pick up, you know? Yep. Um, and the conference itself, top notch. What did you, what did you take away from the conference? So it took away a lot of things. Um, you want to talk one, about it now? Can we talk about it now? We can talk about it now. Okay. One... There was some talk about ageism, and I'd like to get your perspective on this. We've kind of had this conversation over time, just you and me as friends, Terry. Um, But ageism. not easy. And and they talked about a lot of it just starts with the language that we use, right? Um, Right. Not being so hard on ourselves about going gray or having wrinkles or just another year goes by. Like they think about every card you've given. Um, about a birthday as somebody's getting older. It pokes fun at them. I actually Absolutely think some does. of them are kind of funny, though. They are funny. And you can laugh about it. And it's fun to laugh at them. I mean, it, it is fun to laugh at them. But before long, it goes. It gets deeper than it, even that yes. on a card. Keep going. But it just feels like <clears throat> it's taken on such an awful thing if you're getting older. Yeah. You know, it's awful what's happening to you. You're getting older. Well, guess what? We're all getting older. Right. Um, and, and guess what? And, and, I know a lot now. And you know a lot, and I think you're more interesting. I think people, as mm-hmm. they age, are far more interesting, mm-hmm. have far more stories to tell about than those that don't. It's just a part of getting older, and you'll you'll realize that. I hope you, as you get older, that yes, there's some really magical, fantastic things that happen. There's a lot of ugly things that happen too. I mean, the hair on my chin is awful, well, but I'm just I saying those kind say of anything. things. You know, <laughs> those kind of things that happen to your body is hard, but. The way that we're treated, we already know getting into it that it's going to be scary because we're so bad. We're so easy to older people are so easy as a target. Agreed. 
And it's simply okay. Think about the things we cannot say about people. But it's okay right. to say when we do it about we're doing about in, po- in politics. Right. Every every so all around us getting Everywhere. old is awful. And um and you know what? And we don't mind saying it to you and we don't mind teasing you as you get older. We don't mind calling you old or cry, all the things that go with that. Right. Oh man, look my heart is beating. I just get so angry about this. And not only that, it's also in the companies that you work for. You'll never know it, but you can feel it. And I think, you know, one of the things now I'm, I'm only 52 and I know Noah yeah. in your twenties, that sounds Young. old, right? I mean, it just does, but, right. but w- you hear people all the time say, I still feel like I'm in my twenties mentally, you right? you know, like, um, emotionally, not emotionally. Anyway, you know what I mean? Soul. Like, right yeah. in my heart, I still feel like I'm in my twenties. Right. It's the body that reminds us, but let's be honest, this body is just a tool that's carrying us from one day to the next and it gets wear and tear on it. I mean, yeah. it does, get you know, like tear on you, you it. have but some we're lucky that we, <laughs> you have some beautiful have some wrinkles on your face because you have enjoyed the sun your entire life. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Like I've got scars and I've got old, you know, like those, um, oh, oh, the marks that you get, you know, the discoloration right. on my face and my arms because this body has been here. And, and I'll and tell stretch you, marks from having beautiful right? children that you should be, be fine. Yeah. You know, it's okay. You carried a child or more, one or more. Well, this is a different kind of a body thing. So forgive me for kind of morphing for a second, but I was saying to my sister on the trip, I, we were complaining about something about our bodies and being big and, you know, bigger than we used to be. And I said, you know what, this body, mine, My body has been through so much crap and has survived so many health issues. How am I not grateful for all 200 plus pounds of me? Like, because you got them, because you're here, right? Because you're here. Like, why is that what I'm letting upset me or in some ways define me? Right. So I don't know. I know that's not ageism, but it is life. It's, it is life. It really is life. And I think we just have to be, we have to... I don't know what'll happen. You know, we will always be this way. You figure we've we've been geezers with back in the you know that <laughs> she old said geezer, geezers. You know that whole. I mean, it goes back for decades and decades and decades and decades, forever and ever. We've made issues and fun of people as they age, and I guess you just get more sensitive to it as you. You maybe you're more aware of it. Well, but you, and you, how wrong you're the person is. that people are talking about, right? Especially in this day and age, when we're so careful about what we say about other people. But it's okay still to go ahead and and make fun of and use words like you know that old that old bag. Now know? listen, I don't well, think we that. need to be so uh, extreme that we like you know block out every bit of language because I think like as a society we're very sensitive to anything. I can't I see anything at home without my somebody in my house jokingly you know calling me something ism and i'm like come on now so i know we need We're to late. take a break okay um my fault all right we will I'm be sorry back. can we talk a little more about this at the end i, think I we know should. we've got a we've got a guest okay. coming so stick around with us you are listening to caregiver crossing a show designed for family caregivers and the people who love them caregiver crossing is brought to you weekly by joyce house in partnership with our friends at cardon and associates and we're here every week to bring you support education and hopefully a good laugh Visit caregivercrossingradio.org to connect with us, hear past podcasts, learn about caregiver support resources in the community, and more. Again, caregivercrossingradio.org. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Caregiver Crossing shortly. This season, Instacart has your back to school. As in, they've got your back to school lunch favorites, like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back to school supplies, like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. If you're waking up feeling like you could use a few more hours of sleep, the problem might be right underneath you. Better quality sleep comes with a better quality bed. And the Sleep Number Smart Bed uniquely contours to your head, neck, and shoulders for a more comfortable sleep. It's a total game changer. All night long, you can count on your Sleep Number Smart Bed to automatically respond and adjust to your movements so that you can sleep comfortably all night long, which feels amazing after a tough workout. 
You can even get personalized insights about your sleeping habits to help you sleep better. It's like having a coach for your best sleep. And now during Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year, save 50% on the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. Sleep Number, official sleep and wellness partner of the NFL. See store for details. We are back on Caregiver Crossing. I am your host, Tina McIntosh, in studio with my co-host, Carrie Stacy, and my incredible producer, Noah Taylor. And today <laughs> on the phone with us, we have joining us a former nurse with over 30 years of experience. Wow. She is a caregiver. She is a patient and health care advocate. And her name is, you love her name. Go ahead, Terry. I do. Nan Weatherhorn is here. Nan, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're great, and we are so glad to have time with you this morning. I'm going to go ahead, or today rather, um, go ahead and, and we'll get started by learning a little bit about you and your background. Will you share with us a little bit about uh, what drew you into the career that you're in in this industry? Yes, I've al- I always wanted to be a nurse, and I went to Vanderbilt University and graduated in 1976 from their School of Nursing, and I have worked as a nurse in neonatal pediatric and adult ICUs for over 30 years. I've also done home care, mostly on people who are on ventilators and feeding tubes and that type of thing. Um, but I've, you know, I've continued, I still have my nursing license, I keep it, and I became a patient advocate because I saw the need for better communication between doctors and patients especially, but between doctors and healthcare staff as well. Wow. Okay. So I am imagining all of the changes that you have seen in the healthcare system over the years. And I know, Nan, that you put together something called the Map to Good Health Resource Kit. Does it help people navigate the system? Like, what, what is it exactly, this resource kit? Okay, my resource kit is um, made for people who really have are afraid of the healthcare system, don't know what to say to their doctor. I give you all of those tools because I put everything all together in four or five pages. It's all your medical information, your insurance information, your healthcare information, your family health history, which is super important, and most people forget about that. But I give it to you in a way that I'm going to give you all the questions a doctor would ask, and you're going to fill it out yourself. And then at the end, I give you other questions that you might want to ask your doctor, depending on whether you're a man, a woman, different things or ch- for your children. So I put all of that in there as well. And it's made specifically for people to gather all of their healthcare information into one place so that before they go to a doctor or an emergency room, They don't panic and go, oh, my God, where's that health insurance card? Where's this? Where's that? It's all in those pages, and you just print it out and take it with you. I think I applaud you for putting putting something like this together, creating something like like that, and explain why this is so important and why this helps when you have all of this in front of you, as whether you're a patient or a caregiver. Explain why this kit is what does what it does. Well, it gives you the confidence that you need to talk to a doctor because most of the time people go into the doctor and the initials behind their name are MD, not God. And many people think they are like a God. So they have to ask questions, but they're also seeing so many patients that they don't always ask all the questions that they might need to. So this tool will help you give the doctor all the information he or she needs to give you the best, safest healthcare possible. Nan, it puts me, I don't mean to make light of it because it's very serious and important stuff. It puts me in the mindset though, I've got three kids and over the years trying to coach them when they're going to call an office and make an appointment for something. And they're nervous, they're nervous, they're nervous. You know, the receptionist answers the phone and says, hello. And my kids don't remember their names. I'm like, start by saying hello, Mm -hmm. introduce yourself. Like, And I hear what you're saying. We get so stressed. I mean, I can tell you I'm very comfortable and very calm, I think, in a healthcare setting. But you take my blood pressure and my pulse and it tells a different story. And we forget things. And I think we feel so rushed so often in a doctor's office. And I imagine that your toolkit helps people slow down 
and remember why they're there and what it is they really want to say. Because how many people historically before your kit leave the doctor's office and say, oh, I had three more things I wanted to talk about. I forgot. Yeah, exactly. You just don't get that kind of time with doctors anymore. You don't get you every minute you get with a doctor. It has to count, right? It does. Yeah, it It, does. It does. And I will tell you, honestly, I bring that in when I go with my clients, I hand it to the doctor. I try to email it to them. That doesn't always work, but I hand it to the doctor and every doctor so far has looked at it, looked at me, looked back at the forms and goes, did you do this for everybody? Mm-hmm. I said, I do it for my clients. And, they, and that's where I got the idea because they said to me, this is so amazing. Emergency room doctors look at me and go, I actually love you, lady. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I don't know what you do, but I love you. Yeah. My, this um, answers every question I can have. And Nan, I recently had to take someone I love to the emergency room and with quite a checkered health history. And I did an onset of diagnoses with the date and what severity and if it, the symptoms had happened in the last 48 hours and next steps kind of laid it all out. And it was the same reaction. So I wish I had had your kit in hand because I think that map to good health resource kit would have been very helpful. What's some real life feedback that you've gotten from people who have utilized your system? Well, they've told me that they no longer panic before they go to see a doctor or before they go to an emergency room. Because the form helps them, the map to get help for healthy living helps them. But also in this resource bundle, I have a little video about how to prepare for an emergency room visit and a few little tips to know what to say, who to say it to, and how to say it. So that's, that's a big one that people have told had tell me, that's really helpful. I'm not scared anymore to go into that emergency room with all of those other sick people and march right up to that receptionist person and tell them what I need. Because I tell them to do it in two or three sentences, not a long story, bullet, bullet it, tell them the most important Oh. And then you sit down. Oh, Nan, before I know we have to go here in a second. But before we do that, could you coach everybody on not giving every detail of every story when they're trying to get some care? <laughs> I'm telling you, it happens, right? Like 45 minutes later, oh. you're like, oh, I want to be helpful, but you got to get to the point. Anyway, I know, Terry, I, you had. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's it. Three sentences, no more. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. This is Nan Weatherhorn, uh, the Map to Good Health Resource Kit. Quickly, before we take a break, because we want you to come back, give us uh, give us an information about how we can access the Map to Good Health Resource Kit. Go to livinghealthywithnan.com. Mm, that's oh, easy. Oh, wait, livinghealthywithnan.com. It's Got that it. simple. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's that simple. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we'll meet you right back here after the break to continue our conversation with Nan and talk more about the Map to Good Health Resource Kit. You're listening to Caregiver Crossing. It's a show designed for family caregivers and the people who love them. Caregiver Crossing is brought to you as a service of Joyce House in partnership with Cardon and Associates with locations in Broad Ripple and near the University of Indianapolis campus. Campus too. Joyce House provides exceptional day service for services, I should say, day services for individuals living with a life altering diagnosis and compassionate support for family caregivers throughout the community. At Joyce House, we believe that everyone deserves a life to their best. Uh, goodness, deserves to live their best life regardless of their abilities. You can learn more about our adult day and caregiver support services by calling 317-254-0828 or by visiting joycehouse.org today. That web address again is joycehouse.org. Stick around. We'll be back with more Caregiver Crossing right after this. Getting the smile and confidence you've been dreaming about all from the comfort of your home isn't a total mystery with Bite Clear Aligners. Just don't be surprised if all your friends start asking, what's your secret? Begin by ordering your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces, plus they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot 
Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look like that? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects. But there is an easier way. Thumbtack is the app that makes it easier to care for your home. Pull out your phone and in just a few taps, search, chat, and book highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Download Thumbtack and start caring for your home the easier way. We are back on Caregiver Crossing. I'm Tina McIntosh in studio with Terry Stacy and our wonderful producer, Noah Taylor. I'm happy to be here and happy to continue the conversation with someone who is really inspirational and very, very knowledgeable. And so um, Nan Weatherhorn is with us and she is a former nurse with over, it says 30 here, but did I hear you say 40, Nan? Mm -hmm. It's 40. Yeah. I still have my license. Yeah, I still practice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 40 years of experience with nursing. She has been everywhere from pediatrics to adult ICU, um, doing some home care as well. And she has been a caregiver and she is a patient and healthcare advocate. And she's got what we learned about in last segment is Map to Good Health Resource Kit, which I think is fantastic. And so, Nan, we want to hear from you about, you know, 40 years, you have seen some things. Um, you have been involved in many aspects of the healthcare system and want to know from you, what are the biggest challenges that patients and their families face when they're dealing with, you know, the healthcare system in general? Communication. Mm. Preach, Communication. Sister. Yes, because doctors, I've, I've been told by many of my clients as an advocate that I actually speak English. I can translate medicalese to English, but most of the time you have to, and I know it's hard for many people, you have to say, doctor, I really didn't understand what you said. Could you please tell me in plain English what my problem is? Yeah. Yep. And it's not as easy for some of them as others, right. but communication to me, you need to understand your diagnosis and you under, understand all of your treatment options that are available to you. I, I think, I wonder, Nan, um, it's got to be hard to be a medical professional trying to give hard news to somebody and not knowing the audience. I'm thinking more hospital setting, but even, you know, family physicians that are giving news about things, they fall in love with us as their patients often, right? Like I remember right. I, I've had breast cancer, two primaries, and my first one, my doctor who I adored called me and said in a very, very, I could tell she was hurting um, Tina, it looks like it might be carcinoma. Well, as the as the layperson hearing carcinoma, I was like, wait, wait, like I had to track it in my brain and said, are you telling me I have cancer? Yeah. And it was <laughs> and I know I recognize it's because she has love in her heart for me. And it was really hard for her to say those words. But, you know, I think walking in, like I'm thinking about an ER doc or, you know, an internalist or something at the or internist, I always say it wrong, at the hospital walking in. And having to tell somebody hard news and not knowing their personality and how they're going to respond, it's got to be really challenging. So what you're recommending helps the doctor too, right? Like, this is who I yeah. am. Please talk to me in these words and and talk to me like exactly. I'm a kindergartner. And, and well, I know you talk to them like a fifth grader. That's what I tell everybody, yes. like a fifth grader. Yes. Because that doesn't make them seem stupid, but it also puts it on a level that you've got to explain it in just plain English. Um, that's a big, that's a huge thing. Communication is key. And most, I will say that most doctors really try hard, but yes, they are rushed. And when they deliver bad news, the really good ones spend time with you. And yeah. they ask a lot. Of, they ask you, do you really understand what I'm saying? Do you understand um, the treatment options available? Now, you don't have to make a decision right now. You go home and you think about it, and then we'll make an appointment for you to come back. You can call me. You can call the nurse practitioner. We'll answer your questions. That's a great way for bad news to be delivered and to be worked through because, you, you know, most people, when they hear the word cancer, they go, okay, I'm dying. That's right, it. I'm right. dying. And that's not what the doctors say. And when I go, when my clients hire me as an advocate, I'm taking notes and I give it to them in writing and they'll look at, they'll call me the next day and say, Nan, did you know the doctor didn't say I was going to die? I said, mm -hmm. 
I know that. Mm -hmm. He never said it. I said, no, he never did. Mm -hmm. Because that's not what's going to happen. Did you read all of it? Yeah. I could survive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nan Weatherhorn is with us, and the Map to Good Health Resource Kit is what she's here to talk about. The healthcare system, as you said, you've been in a part of it for 40 years. And I think as patients, oftentimes we feel like that the system has just gotten so big. You know, you've got four or five different doctors, especially when you're in an emergency situation. You know, you've got your, your family physician. I mean, it just, it's gotten so big. You've seen this, right? And is it for mm-hmm. the best, or do you think that it, it could have moved maybe a little slower? Well, you know, here's, there's a lot of issues with our healthcare system. We know it's broken. Communication is a piece of it, but the insurance piece makes it difficult yeah. for many people as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a piece we haven't talked about, but I always tell people, you know, call your insurance company before you go for the MRI, not after. Oh, Call them before, you, yeah, you can call and say, this is where I'm going for the MRI. And they'll go, well, we don't cover you there. And you go, well, where do you cover me so that I can go to the right place? And then you call your doctor and say, it needs to go here. Wow. I think that's the hard part so is that we have I, to we, advocate we have to for do ourselves, that. right? You, but that's what you're you saying. Do. You have to. It's not you going do. to land and nobody's going to tell you that you can do that. No, they don't. And that's, the, it's not really that they keep it a secret. It's just that these people think that, you know this, and you really don't. So I always tell everybody, call the insurance company before you go to the doctor, before you get the surgery, before you get a test. Call the insurance company first and say, this is where I'm going. And they'll say, mm, we don't cover you there. Yeah. And you know what? Because there are people that go ahead and get the test and get a bill for $5,000 for the test. Right. You know, I want to ask you about it. And that causes them to have a heart attack. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Patient advocacy. This is what you do. And this is what, how do you see the future of a patient advocate? I think, I think it only gets bigger and and we need more of you. What, but what do you see? I, I truly think that everybody needs a patient advocate. I think that in the future, um, people will be hiring patient advocates or, using my map to good health for healthy living and the tools in there to help them be their own advocate. But it's no longer the time when you sit back and you can tell how old I am because I'm going to reference Marcus Welby MD where they do the house calls and they all come, the doctors always come into your house. It's not like that anymore. Yep. And you have to ask the important questions. And the one thing I will say, I think this, one of the most important things I've learned over my years of nursing is as the patient, no question is stupid. Well, it's true. No question that you have about your health is stupid. But you would be surprised how many people say, oh, I know this is a stupid question, but there is no stupid question because it's about your health and you're the one who takes care of you or your loved one and goes home with them. The doctor doesn't. The nurse doesn't. So there is no stupid question. It's so true. All wow. right. Um, Nan, thank you so much for being here you're for terrific. what you're doing. Living healthy thank with you. Nan.com. Living healthy with Nan.com is where we want to be. So um, check that out. Nan, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I also have a, a newsletter that's at living. You can sign up at living healthy oh. with Nan.com as well. And it's free. But it, we deal with a different medical issue every month. Wonderful. Awesome. Hey, we're going to be in touch about a project called Caregiver Way we have going on here, too. So Noah will will make that connection. But uh, you're stuck with us now, Nan. So, um, <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate oh, it. Thank you. For, for the rest of you, you are listening to Caregiver Crossing, a show designed for family caregivers and the people who love them. And Caregiver Crossing is brought to you by Joyce House in partnership with Cardon and Associates with 20 communities owned, operated, or managed in the Midwest in more than 40 years, like Nan. For more than 40 years of senior living experience, (laughs) Cardon and Associates provides residents with the best senior living options and personalized care. Visit cardon.us for more information and to find a community near you. Now stay put. We'll be right back with more Caregiver Crossing right after the break. This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony, the dating app to find someone you can be yourself with. Why doesn't eHarmony allow copy and paste in first messages? Because you are unique and your conversations should reflect that. eHarmony wants you to find someone who will get you. 
How are you going to know who gets you if people send you the same generic conversation starters they message everyone else? Conversations that actually help you get to know each other. Imagine that. Get who gets you on eHarmony. Sign up today. What makes a life a good one? Is it the adventure you have? Or the friends you find along the way? Maybe it's pursuing your passion while striving to protect, defend, and save what you believe in every single day. So, what makes a life a good one? In the Coast Guard, we think it's all of the above and more. But you'll have to find out for yourself. Visit GoCoastGuard.com to learn more. I don't really know what we're doing. I'm Tina. <laughs> hey. You're welcoming everyone back. Oh, hi, everybody. Hello. Um, Hello. We're back on Caregiver we're, Crossing. We're not here much longer. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Hold hold out. <laughs> Something great will come after us. Right. I'm sure of it. Um, I'm Tina McIntosh. I'm in studio with my co-host, Terry Stacy, Noah Taylor, brilliant um, producer, and so grateful to be with you here this weekend. Um, at the top of the hour, so Nan was great. Uh, glad she was with us. Mm-hmm. I do want to come back to what we were talking about at the very beginning of the show today, and that was the U.S. Aging Conference. Terry and I, Terry in particular, got a little <laughs> heated about the whole idea of ageism, and I'm with you, sister. Like, I'm right there with you. Um, it is actually, I we had lunch with the gentleman, James, who runs the Gerontological Society of America. Oh, wow. And when we said, what's the goal of the Gerontological Society of America? He said to really to end ageism. And I thought, ooh, that is interesting. It's a big undertaking. It's a heavy topic. Well, so we went into that a little bit more. I mean, there's a lot of social psychology behind it, right? Like, how do you change? I mean, seriously, how do you change the mindset of That's what we were talking about in that first break. Right? How do you do? How do you do it? How do you do it? We've and done so, it with other, we have done it with other, what, how, how good have we gotten in changing, we would be talking about with racism and listen, how we speak um, and careful what we're, what we're saying. I'm going to say words this matter. and I, I'm not sure that this will be, I, I, I don't know, I'm just going to say it. Sometimes I get wrapped in like racism as an example and, and parallel with ageism. Okay. Any of the isms, I mean, any of the bad oh, things, right. right? I get wrapped into, oh, gosh, we just haven't come that far. And then I have to stop myself and think, in 50 years time, we sure have. We have. Right? With women's rights, with we have, with we diversity have um, and appreciation, with um, LGBTQ plus rights, right. like with all of it, like we really have come a long way. Doesn't mean we don't have work to do. Exactly. We're not there yet. And but I don't even know what there looks like, you know, like I don't either, but or if have, that will ever happen when we all just look at each other as just a human being. Well, and uh, in my mind, that's what heaven is. I mean, it, truly, it like in my be. mind, it's it, that's what I get I'm to heaven for. and there's that appreciation right. for, you know, like, oh, my goodness, you're Hindu. And I didn't know we'd see each that's other right. here. And look holy. how divided we are just with politics. Oh. I mean, look where are we, we are with talk that. About we are in such a mess with the division um, and I and I was talking about that the other day on uh, another show on how do you fix this? Well, here's my thing is why can't let's just say you're um, party X and I'm party Y. I don't even know which ones those are. Right. I'm right. just putting that out there. You're one. I'm I the other. I have to say I don't know your politics. Well, there's a good reason for that. But <laughs> but you're one and I'm the other. Why is it that I have to hate you? Because of the difference. Right? Because... I don't know. I can, can I just say, that's cool you think that. I don't agree. And I'm not looking to convince you. And I don't want you to convince me. Like, love you. See you later. Let's have lunch next week. Exactly. Why, I don't understand. Why does that change that dynamic change? You see it on social media. You see the hate. Oh, it's so strong. Um, well, when he- it comes to politics. I stay out of it. Well, here's why you don't know it about me is because I'm in the middle and I'm just like spinning my chair around. Now, I have opinions on things, but I I don't know uh, enough about politics. So if I say something wrong, I'm sure somebody will email me and let me know. But 
I'm very interested in like, what's this libertarian party? Because my understanding is it's I can have a value that I hold in my heart, but that doesn't mean I judge you if your value or choice is different than mine. Is that right for libertarian? I be- that's what I think. So that's what that's I am. What then. I whatever that, whatever I just described, whatever the word is for that. Right. There are things about all, about all the sides that you might agree with. There are bits and pieces sure. here and there. And that's, that's sometimes where I am. But where's you know? that candidate? I don't. Well, that candidate you hope would be that guy in the middle. You know, but where is that person? I don't know. I was saying the other day, <laughs> I, I want that. It, I want to know that person. It's you, Tina. You're going to have to run. Dude, I have a brain tumor. Nobody wants me. But I think can't about, do it. You think about you need and a I great have a history. leaders. <laughs> yeah. great, and you're a great leader. Great leaders. Um, we need them desperately. But who, but wants, who, to are them, that who wants to take on that job? And I said, the, pre- the people that I know that run nonprofits, the leaders in yeah. nonprofits, they know how to unify. They know how to make them the, whatever money they have go the, the farthest. They know how to communicate and they truly, truly care about the people in their neighborhoods. I would agree. And so they we need should to think be, about who is that not profit know. leader to you know, run Jim Morris that just passed away was such a, it was an amazing leader yeah. and his hand was in everything. Oh, we should watch our time, shouldn't it's okay, we? Three minutes. We, we okay? We're okay. Okay. You know, anyway, I, I there are there I that's what I said. I said if you could get somebody that has done what a Jim Morris does yep. had done. Yep. You know, that to me is maybe somebody that could unify. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's going to take a miracle. And who cares about people and cares so much about the people, truly cares about the people, mm-hmm. not just a talking head that says, you know, I care about what you care about. Mm-hmm. Cause it turns out most of you don't, mm-hmm. but, but those that are running these organizations around our country, and not the giant ones where you hear, you know, they're doing right. I get that. something. I'm just saying, speak up people locally. Like, uh, y- you can email me too at Tina at joyshouse.org. Yeah. And I want to talk with you about aging issues and caregiving issues. And I want to talk with you about end of life issues. I'd like to be at that table. You know why? I just don't want to be at the head of the table because I have a brain tumor. <laughs> great, great leaders <laughs> of organizations like yourself, you get work done Quicker than the government can get I could, it done. I couldn't be slowed down by the government. It would drive no. me crazy. And that's the I'm truth. a quick to change. Like, you want to do it? Let's go. Yeah. You're uh, a great leader. Well, thanks. I don't know how this turned about me. I thought we were... To, let's go back to ageism. You <laughs> seem to like that topic a lot. Yeah, it was a good one for you. I think she didn't like the topic. <laughs> oh, I misread the room. See? It's okay. Well, that's all right. I know she'd misread the room. We're going to have to work tumor. on that if you want to get any farther. <laughs> um, all right. So I think we have to go. Um, you really can email me at tina at joyshouse.org. And by that, I mean, please email me. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you want on the show, what you don't want on the show. If you'd like us just to stop talking, we can have that conversation. Um, and also, Terry, I know we have somebody important that we want to thank for being a part. We do. Um, Caregiver Crossing is supported by Cardon and Associates, 20 communities owned, operated, or managed in the Midwest with more than 40 years of senior living experience. Cardon and Associates provides residents with the best senior living options and personalized service. Until next time. They- <laughs> Until next time, take good care of each other, and we'll see you next week. 